Hello ladies and gentlemen and welcome back to another Factorio tutorial. My name is Rick Negative and let's get cracking. Today we're going to do a little bit of a theoretical thing so uh, let's go play with something cool. And here we are. So this is a logic gate and that does say and. I don't know if you can <laughs> read that but yeah. Logic gates are the basis of uh, electronics, computing, I don't know, it's, it's definitely the basis of something. They're very, very important. Logic gates are a way of making a decision. So given two inputs, you decide and uh, output something. That's that's what a logic gate is. So you get choice A, choice B, and then you have a result based upon that. Now, what I've got is I have recreated all these logic gates in Factorio just in a theoretical basic way to try and demonstrate how each of the conditions work. So, a logic gate you will normally see with two inputs and one output, okay, so that's why I've got two combinators and one output combinator, except for the not, com uh, the not logic gate, but I'll come to that one, that's a bit of a special one. So the first one that we have is AND. So the AND logic gate takes both the A and the B input and only, only outputs a result if we have an input from both A and B, hence why it's called the AND gate. So what have I got? Well, I've got a constant combinator, okay, and it's putting out a signal A and a signal B. So here, I, all I do in the first step is I check if I have a signal for A and a signal for B. Once they get outputted to the combinator, I decide on what cases I actually want to output a signal in. Now, in practice, uh, your logic gates are rarely going to be implemented like this. This is to try and break out and show you what is happening inside a logic gate. Here, the combinator, okay, it's only going to output when we have a both a signal from both A and B. So what I'm looking for is a signal equal to two. So one signal from here and one signal from here. Remember, these were just checking to see if there was an input. Yes, yes, they both said in a signal, that equals two, and it outputs a third signal, C. That's the AND gate. Let me just switch pages. Now, the Wikipedia is quite handy, giving a bit of an overview as to what each of the gates do. The second gate is a rather handy one, and it just lets it through. If there's an input at all, from A or B or both, or anywhere, it'll say, yep, we've got an out we've got an input and we'll give an output. So the first step is the same as always. We're gonna check if there's an input from A check if there's an output input from B and then we're going to pass it on to the decider. This one is set up so that if we have any signal at all, so if there's a signal and it's greater than zero, so there's any signal, it's going to output a third signal C. Now let's see if this works. Let's uh, send these both to zero. Ta-da! No signal. See that these aren't outputting anything, hence this isn't outputting anything, which means that our logic gate works. If I was to set this to 1, we have a signal C. These logic gates are how we can make decisions based upon things in the game. The NOT gate. This is sometimes known as an inverter. It takes whatever signal you have and it changes it to the opposite. In mathematics, it would be multiplied by negative one. That's what this does. It takes whatever you've got and it flips the sign of it. So if we have an input from one and not zero, we output a zero. If we have an input of zero, we'll output a... <laughs> we'll output a one. Oh, I, I think I just confused myself. I think I confused everyone. So, so here I'm, I'm using signal one and signal zero to illustrate a zero signal, which isn't technically right. It's just to try and uh, give you guys an indication of actually how it works. Because otherwise, this uh, this here wouldn't show a signal if I was inverting it correctly as per one should. So we have an input of one. Okay, so that's outputting a zero, which means we've got a zero. So 
one to begin with, zero to finish. If we were to flip this over and go import a zero, we end up with a one. Okay, that's all that does. It flips it over. Let's let's move on because that's uh, I'm being way too confusing there. Nor the N or gate is the opposite of the OR gate. So basically, the NOR gate is where we output a signal if there are no signals whatsoever. So there's, say for example, we have a signal from B and not A, or A and not B, nothing. We have an input from both A and B, still nothing. Only when we have zero signals will we output for the NOR gate. So you notice here that we have zero output Okay, zero output. These are testing, and these are set up in a little bit of a different way, just to say, okay, well, let's let's check. If there is no signal from A, we're gonna pass on to the next combinator, and same thing for B, because there's only one case in which we output a signal. So this decider combinator is looking for that signal of two, that is to say there's nothing from here and nothing from here, and then outputs that third signal C. So that is the NOR gate. The NAND gate is the negative AND. So that means that uh, we have the opposite of the AND gate. So the AND gate, remember, was when we had a, an input from both A and B. This is the opposite of that. So this is where we have uh, no input whatsoever. Okay, zero, zero. Zero from here, zero from here. We're gonna output something, notice. We've got zero and zero, we're outputting something. Where we have uh, one, an input for A and nothing from B, we're going to output something. An infra input from B and nothing from A, we're going to output something. That is the NAND gate. Now let's uh, let's just have a play around with this. Uh, let's say we uh, put through a one. Uh, we still got something good. Uh, let's see if we do an input from both. We have nothing. Notice that this is set up so that we must have always less than two signals. That's how I'm working the logic here. XOR. The XOR gate is, uh, where, how can I, um, it, it's the exclusive OR gate is how it's, uh, how it's described. So basically it's where we have an input from A or B. If we have zero inputs whatsoever, no output. If we have an input from both A and B, no output either. So it's only when we have one signal and one signal only that we will output a third signal C. So you notice here that we're checking for just that one signal. So we're gonna check here, see if we've got a signal. If we have a signal, we're gonna pass it on. If we have a signal, we're gonna pass it on. And here, just checks it and says, all right, well, if we've got one, one signal only, that means we must exist in the XOR case and we'll output a third signal. The last thing that we're gonna cover is the XOR nor gate. This is the uh, the exclusive of the OR gate. Now the OR gate was the uh, a one an input from A, an input from B, or an input from both. So this one only gives us an output when there are no inputs or inputs from both. So the XNOR works as follows. So we have kind of two distinct edge cases, hence two combinators. So this is going to check when we have zero signals. This is going to check when we have more than two signals. These are going to check as always. If it has a signal, it's going to pass it on. And that is how I implemented the XNOR gate. This may be of strictly limited usefulness to, uh, to most people because this is a more of a, a just a and letting you know that they exist and showing you how one can implement them. It's rare that you're actually going to build one of these physical gates like this. Uh, but be aware, go do some research and be warned, logic gates are coming.